and welcome back to another fully explained today we'll be playing lissandra actually on the na server currently playing on 196 ping as you can see up there thought it'd be interesting to do one of these fully explains on 200 ping just so you can kind of see um, how the game is different now let me quickly show you the elo of the game it is fairly high elo um, if you guys can see this so we've got doxos on tsm challenges actually met of a dream hack acadian um yeah i don't really know anyone else but they're all masters so it's a reasonably high elo game i'm playing lissandra echo which is in my opinion kind of trash i'm not sure why we picked echo i did pick lissandra early but um it's fine and i'm up against leblanc and now leblanc actually picked after me so that's sort of interesting now, when you're versus LeBlanc, you have a couple different things you can do. Okay, so she started Q. Normally what you do is you hold your ability and you see if Lissandra starts Q, or see if LeBlanc starts Q or W, because if LeBlanc starts W, um, normally you can start W as well and get a really good trade. Um, I kind of should have expected maybe that she would just go Q because she does have um, Aerie. So that means it's pretty unlikely for her to start uh, with W. Now, when you're in this matchup, I think you do need to be quite careful of jungle ganks. I actually think the 1v1 is slightly favored towards LeBlanc. Whenever I play LeBlanc, I always win this matchup. But uh, Lissandra is just so good at neutralizing. Like, it's just so hard to ever... Like, you can get a lead, sure, but you can't ever kill her. And then in team fights, it's super, super annoying. Now, I was kind of lazy, so I didn't actually see where Kindred started. But I'm just going to come more down here because my jungler is passing to this side. Normally, you'd want to check where the jungler started and... Uh, you know, ward the opposite side of that, but because I wasn't paying attention, I'm just going to ward the side my jungler is passing to. Now, there is a reasonable chance I get ganked here from top side. Um, I think as long as I can get E here. Yeah, okay, so I think now I should be good. It's a little hard to use a sound E on high ping. That's something I've kind of struggled with. Um, and actually, in general, on high ping, I'd say the two things that are most difficult is like, uh, one, dodging skill shots is really, really tough, which is quite annoying as I dodge a skill shot. Um, which is quite annoying because most mid matchups obviously are quite skill shot reliant. Um, and probably the other thing is just CSing. And I think like it's not as bad if you play champs like Lissandra or Gallio because you, you can't reach a point where you can sort of just like one shot the wave and not worry too much about it. But um, yeah. So I think as long as he trades like in these creep waves with me, it's not too bad for either of us. It's these kind of even trade. Um, I think, honestly, as long as I am trading fairly even, I am honestly okay with that. Even though, I think you could probably expect to build a lead. Like, given that you take... Well, this game I took Aerie. Hold on, I have to come to this. This doesn't look like that great a fight, though. Although we do have Bob Pryor. Ooh, I should have gone that, I suppose. I thought she was just going to W, but... Okay, as I was saying, so like... Like I said, normally I feel like I win this matchup as LeBlanc. But I think if you're taking Aerie Scorch... Um, which I have here, that you should be able to build up a lead. The thing is, though, just when I am playing on high ping, like, I'm kind of not expecting to win lane. I think laning is extremely difficult on high ping, like I said, because you can't dodge skill shots. Um, it's really hard to CS, and, like, those are things that are kind of, you know, it's just extremely important for laning, right? So, as I said, um, I've just been solo killed, so that's pretty unfortunate. You definitely shouldn't be getting solo killed in this matchup. But what I'll do instead, I could have flashed there even, but I was just trying to greet it. I'm just going to TP back and should be fine to clear out this wave. So, yeah, kind of unfortunate. But the fact that I haven't really been able to dodge any ease is a big issue. And also the fact that I used my cooldowns in the river and didn't really get anything from it was kind of bad. Like I used an E and that meant I couldn't E when uh, Echo was around. But that's OK. Like Le LeBlanc is still going to have a, a pretty tough time here, I would say. Um, what we'll do... Ooh, I can actually come up here. Ooh. Okay, now that's pretty bad. LeBlanc's gonna be very, very fed as a result. Oh yeah, that's really bad. Okay, I don't even think I can kill LeBlanc here. There's too many people around. Yeah, I have to go back mid. So that's pretty bad, and that's, like, mainly because I died mid. So, one thing that you guys should, like, think about a little bit is kind of how like, your mistakes, like, affect the rest of the game. So, an example would be, you know, if you don't die mid there, right, you probably reset, LeBlanc matches your reset, and then you both base and, and nothing happens, right? But here, what ended up happening is, like, because I died, LeBlanc actually had the opportunity to run top. And so, suddenly, like, a game that should be probably, like, completely even is now actually, like, quite far behind. 
So a lot of the time, like you guys like might not realize like how much your mistakes like impact the game, I suppose. Um, and it also means that when you make good plays, you probably don't realize how much they affect the game either. Like sometimes they affect the game in ways that you, you might not even like realize just like later down the line. Like maybe because you have like a bit more gold, you're able to win like the next fight or something like that. Just kind of an interesting thing to think about. Now I am like really, really far behind in this matchup. So I'm probably going to have to build Rod of Ages because I don't think I can really play the 1v1 without it. Um, Catalyst is really good against Assassin Champs. And I've obviously fallen quite far behind against an assassin champ, and in order to stem the bleeding, I think it's probably a good idea for me to go for the Rod of Ages. Now, I think something I'm going to do here is just ward the lane. So, because I'm not getting much prior anyway, I don't really need to ward for jungle ganks, and also I can just like, oh, I'm coming to this. I think we actually win this fight. It's a level 5 kindred. I'm not old kindred here. I better flash. Oh, he got six. Okay, I think we <laughs> might be in trouble here. Maybe Lucian can get him. Okay, that gives us one. We can chase this. Oh my god, Tom's here? Okay. I thought we lost the game here, but it looks like it actually turned out. Oh my god. What a monster. Can we get this guy too? Oh my god, we actually might. Okay, well that turned out really well. I'm honestly not too sure how because that looked pretty doomed. Um, I should have flashed on the Kindred earlier. I was kind of hoping I could just like get in range um, to flash ult. But the fact that she got 6 made that fight a lot closer. And to be honest, the only reason we really won was because Khan managed to come down. But that fixes my lane, I would say, a lot. And the fact that we got dragged doesn't really like matter, but it's always nice. So I'll just crash this and look to reset. Mm. Could be in trouble here. She has double chain. Oh, okay. She managed to get out. So she, oh yeah, that's right. She used double dash. Didn't have double chain. So we're gonna base here. Um, uh, let's see. And I do actually have enough with Futures Market to go Catalyst, which I think I will, because I like I said, I really need to stop the bleeding. Like I'm very, very far behind right now. Um, can I get here? Probably not. I mean I'm gonna watch, but I'm I'm guessing I can't really. Wow, he's actually going like crazy. I'm just gonna ping that LeBlanc's coming. Actually, f*** it, I'll just walk. <laughs> I guess. LeBlanc's gonna kill Echo here somewhere. Oh, dude. So obvious. Maybe I can clean something up. Oh my god, they all have the blast cone. So annoying, man. I ping LeBlanc coming so many times and he just like doesn't listen whatsoever. At least now I have the catalyst, so should be kind of fine, but that's like really frustrating because I gave up a wave for it. And I would say like this is somewhat why like Echo Echo Lissandra is like a bad combo. Like normally Lissandra like gets priority through her gang setup and through push. But the problem is here, there is actually not like a whole lot of threat of gank setup because Echo is like not particularly good at ganking and he kind of just wants to like Echo like sort of wants someone else to bring the damage. And he can bring like a little bit of CC. No way that works, right? So because there's no way I can get to this bot play in time, I'm just gonna hit mid. Um, they should be fine here. Yeah, should be fine. Nice, that's actually really good by him. Wow, Docs is smurfing. Oh, so close. Maybe I should have walked down. But it's hard to know, right? Because they can just like walk out. And it's their choice to keep fighting. But either way, like at least we've managed to punish something. The thing is there, it's like as long as you do something with it like whether it's punish mid or like push the wave and then go down like as long as you trade something at least then you're doing some sort of punish it always feels bad when your opponent's like allowed to roam and i guess again like the reason leblanc's kind of allowed to have a lot more pressure than she should is because i got solo killed at level three yeah which shouldn't really happen as i was saying but um this is like kind of good like we managed to win on top side we got two plates mid we got a herald and things are looking honestly pretty good in the game right now so I will continue to push this in. And uh, let's see. How much do I need for this? 51. Yeah, so when you have Futures Market, you can ping this and it'll tell you the amount you need, even with Futures Market, which I find to be quite useful. Uh, so I'm going to try to get one more wave, and then I will just look for some sort of reset here. This guy's a hard steal already. Be very, very strong. I think a lot of gold bot lane as well. Um, I have to hold my cooldowns here. 
Because I do want to just like get a reset off. Nice dodge on the chain. Some of these dodges, like the ones I am able to get off, it's less because like I'm reacting and more just because I'm predicting. Like it's pretty obvious that LeBlanc's going to use chain in these situations, right? So, yeah. Now I am going to reset and maybe TP bot here. We'll have to see. So... Actually, do I need to? Um, goes there. I think I will. Maybe I can surprise LeBlanc here if she commits too hard. I don't really need to like use my TP for anything, so being around... Uh, oh, dashed in. Okay, got her. Yeah, so she didn't expect me to be TP'd there. The thing is, like, it's kind of hard to see if someone TP's in that situation. And, yeah, I was just able to TP in that. That kind of screws in. Like, you can kind of see, right? I would argue that LeBlanc probably played better than me this game. At least in lane, for sure. I mean, like, again, I'm on 200 ping. So, like, <laughs> obviously they should be playing better than me. I would hope they're playing better than me. But, like, because I have the counter pick, it's, it's just, like, making the game a lot easier for me. That That's kind of the thing, is, like... Obviously, if you get countered mid, right? If you're the better player, you can still, you can still make up for it. But the, the kind of like amount of skill required is definitely higher from the person that is being countered than the person countering. Now, I don't have ulti here, so I might be a little vulnerable. But you can see my wave clear makes it quite hard for her to actually do stuff because LeBlanc sort of struggles. It's like Zoe actually, where if you can't kill the wave, like you sort of struggle to get past it and do stuff. Um. I might just hang around in River here. It's possible this is Warden and LeBlanc just checks me. No, okay. Oh, she has Sweet Bird. Okay, nice little chunk. Uh, I'm actually, rather than going mid, I'm just going to stay here because it looks like, yeah, it looks like we're going to have some sort of fight in the bot jungle. Um, I am around. Mm, don't really have enough damage without ult, but it's fine. Nice time smurfing. So it looks like we're just going to get drag. I can go mid. Yeah, I can just go mid here. Should be all good. Now I have ulti soon, and if, if the Blanc stays, like, she's pretty low. Might be able to punish her. Um, what will I go for next? I could go for Mercs, but, like, normally you do go Mercs versus the Blanc. But I think this game, it's probably unnecessary. Let's see, I need to push this and try collapse on the Kindred. Kindred just invaded our top side. Oh, she actually backed out. Oh my god, no shot. I'll go this way. Nice, and managed to save five. Big. So I could tell the way Kindred was running that she was definitely going to at least jump the wall, if not flash it. So I was kind of already prepared for it. Um, now back to the Mercs thing. It's like, hmm. Th there's like a few different things you could do here. I'll just buy this, and then I'll kind of talk about it. Um, see how much gold they have? 140. So, like, here's the thing. Versus LeBlanc, normally you do go Mercs. However, it's like, she's kind of the only, like, real strong AP. Like, there's Yumi that gives AP damage, Mono that gives, like, a little bit of AP damage. Um, but honestly, like, most of these champs aren't going to be hitting me. Like, Yumi's likely to hit, like, the front line. LeBlanc's likely to go for Lucian or Echo. So I'm not really, like, worried about that. Uh, and then as for, like, other people, I guess I could build Tabi if I really wanted to. Uh, against, like, these two AD threats. But, again, like, I'm building Zonya, so I don't really need it in my mind. So I think I'd rather just have Lucidity, and that way I have Flash CD, because Flash CD is really, really nice. Um, now I'm going to walk mid here. I did try and push mid, or bot wave, but looks like we have another fight. This is the thing with Solar Gear, is like, you'd like to push out these side waves more, um, but people just keep fighting. Hmm, whoa, that guy is a Psycho. Uh, I should have maybe saved my E, yeah. Maybe we can still clean this up, actually. I think it has ulti, right? I need to kind of play this slowly. I think we win the long fight though, as I flash forward, playing it slowly, Pepe laugh. Okay, well I don't think the flash forward was that good, I probably could have waited until I had ulti. Um, I think like I wanted to play slow there, and then I just like randomly didn't, but I wanted to play slow, because time was pushing top, so like we're getting stuff, the longer the fight goes, we just need to like chill out, sort of. And I might be able to get someone with ulti here, if they're not expecting it. Oop, that did not hit him. Maybe if LeBlanc goes in. Ooh. Wasn't quite in range. We'll just look for the reset here. But yeah, Tom was getting stuff top, so we don't really need to play very fast. Now I'm gonna reset. I'm probably gonna build a Zonya's second. I think Zonya's second is like really good on this champ. Even like even if they uh actually I'm gonna 
even if they didn't like have that many ADs, I still think Zonia's second is really good. Like just Zonia's on the Sana in general, it just buys so much time and the stopwatch is really nice. Now I'm gonna stay on Yellow Trinket because I want to be able to push up the side lane quite a bit. Um, I should feel like pretty safe. I can run away from Kindred pretty easily. So I just want to be able to give myself some vision. Because if you go red trinket, sometimes it can be scary to push up. Echo's on top side, so that's uh, kind of unsafe for me. Okay, actually they're both up there. Both junglers, I mean. I have TP soon, so I could watch this, but it looks like I'm not going to need to. So instead, I'm just going to push out bot. And because we know that everyone's top side, the only person that can be here is Mundo. Do I need TP to that? No, it looks like Tama's just destroying them. Okay, literally no one is bot, so I'm just going to push in bot as far as possible. Oh, the CS thing is so hard on 200 ping. Um, let's see. Okay, so because I have nothing else to do, I'm probably just going to hit this tower for now. Normally this is the least valuable thing you can do, but there's nothing to do mid, and it takes Cassandra too long to do jungle camps, especially if you're going like Rod of Ages. Like if you have Ludens or something, you can probably do camps, but... Here, I don't really think I can. Just gonna drop that ward to allow me to keep pushing, and I'm just gonna try keep pressure on this tower, just so that's like yeah, people are forced to respond. Now this time I might actually be able to look mid. Maybe they kill Mundo without me. Okay, well, I'm still coming just in case. Oh my god, that gets me so far. Hmm. I'm just gonna ulti this guy. Oh wow, I did it way too early. Okay, I misplayed. For sure. I think we might win this, though. So. Oh yeah, we definitely win this. Okay, so definitely altered the Kinder way too early. Honestly, just like didn't realize how long the immunity would last for. So, what I was thinking, right, is like I just wanted to save my Lucian, basically. I was just gonna ult for the guaranteed kill, but because I did it so early, like, he actually just managed to pretty much just tank the whole thing while he was immune. Just gonna ping that blue. Um, didn't really end up doing anything. So I'm gonna come back bot here. And I will just shove in this wave as far as I can once again. Like, I'm just always looking for the opportunities to shove this wave all the way in. Because uh, it makes it so you can just, like, keep your CS up really, really well in the mid-game. And because I have TP, like, normally if fights happen, I can respond to them. Here, though, I might actually hit mid. Hmm. Hmm. I don't particularly want this fight. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm here for it, but I don't, like, really want it. I think I'm going to E out. Yeah, because I don't really have, like, uh, any cooldowns and any mana. I'm just, like, kind of dealing with the Blanc. My base TP. I think it honestly could have been better for me to just keep hitting that tower. I think it was. It was sort of a waste for me to walk here. But what I'll do, actually, is I think I will TP to this bot wave. I'm going to buy a stopwatch. We love stopwatches. Oh, are we just ending mid? Ah, well, maybe we can just end. I'll TP to this creep and see what we can do. I think we can just end. Okay, nice, that's one. Um, this guy doesn't have ulti. Hmm. That was a bit dumb. I just realized none of my teammates are nearby. I have stopwatch though. I mean, actually I got good damage. Okay, it wasn't the worst play ever, but it wasn't my, it wasn't my finest work, I'll, I'll say that. Um... Alright, I, I guess we just end, right? Shouldn't be any way we could, they can hold on, so I'll just order this down. Should be no problem whatsoever. Just keep killing that. Alright, and I think just like that, we've won the game. So, you guys will probably be thinking after that, you know, like, shock this game, like, you definitely just got carried, and, like, you're right. Um, I think a lot of, like, me playing on 200 ping has been kind of, like, knowing how to get carried and, like, knowing how to neutralize well, right? And I would say that... This is, like, not a play style I am particularly good at, I suppose. Like, it, definitely, like, the way I normally play the game, right? Is I try and, like, hard win lane, and I try and, like, snowball that lead from there and stuff like that. Um, so that's, like, been one thing pretty difficult. Oh, my God, look at my damage. About playing on high ping. Um, but I think, like, you can kind of see from here, right? Even in a game where I fell behind, and I'd argue that, like, the enemy mid probably gapped me. Um, especially in early game. That you can still have, like, quite a lot of impact just through kind of, again, like, the fundamentals right like making sure you push the waves at the right times and like farming the side wave and just like i don't know basic team fight fundamentals and you can kind of see here that like 
again, like I didn't really have like a great performance mechanically. You know, I'm playing on Tinder Ping. It's very hard to dodge abilities. Um, executing team fights is, is kind of difficult. But once again, it's like I'm playing a champion that is kind of more about decision making, is more about neutralizing. Um, but yeah, I thought that might be kind of interesting for you guys. It's obviously going to be very different from if I play on low ping, uh, but hopefully you guys enjoyed it anyway. And if you want to see more 200 ping games, please let me know. I probably will try to get this account to master, I would say. Right now is Diamond 1, 35 LP, actually plus 35. I mean, I guess it was like a fairly high ELO game, right? Like what ELO is Doxa? He's like, must be what, 400 LP? Yeah, 300 LP. Anyway, thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next one.